G'day everyone and welcome to day four. Today we've got an RF sniffer slash wave meter. Um, some of you who've you know been to my website and looked at some of my other projects may have seen me using my RF sniffing device here or my wave meters. They're, uh, they're quite useful for telling when an oscillator is operating um, or if you've got any RF or you know, oscillation going on at all in your circuit. So I thought it'd be a, a good project, um, a quick simple little tool that uh, you can build in you know half an hour or an hour and uh, it can help you greatly when you're trying to troubleshoot circuits. So this is the my untuned wave meter. It's got a, a special coil here with a, a few different windings, um, essentially trying to in increase the frequency response. It uh, it operates from LF to to UHF and above, um, but it's uh, it's got a couple of resonances because of the structure of the coil where it's a bit more efficient than uh, than just being a you know a nice flat simple probe. But uh, it's still quite handy. Now the wave meters, um, you may have seen the HF version, this is the HF wave meter. It's essentially the same circuit except the coils that you plug in are tuned and have been calibrated with a signal generator. And the VHF version has got one fixed coil, um, it's just a big chunky piece of copper wire. And uh, it's also been calibrated, it's got uh, two switched parts of the, the gang and a little bit of extra capacitance. For, uh, for selecting the frequency, so it covers the, the low VHF region where this covers HF and a little bit into VHF as well, up to 82 megs. But all three of these suffer from uh, the disadvantage that you've got to be looking at the actual needle while you're while you're operating the device. And most of the time, you know, you're trying to get the, the business end here in with your circuit, and it can be a little bit tricky, you know, trying to keep view of the uh, the scale while you're also sticking the, the pointy end into something that you're trying to couple some signal out of. Anyway, to, to demonstrate, here is uh, yesterday's circuit, the uh, the metal detector. I've yanked the piezo out of it because it was annoying me, and I also ended up using it in this project. So, as we can see, when I approach the coil, I couple some RF energy into the wave meter and the needle deflects, telling me that there is some RF there. Which is great, except if I happen to have the device like this, or I'm trying to tune something particularly if I'm trying to tune for maximum deflection, can be a bit tough to, to deal with. So, today I built this. And it's, uh, it's much the same except the, the needle-y part, the, the pointer, has been replaced with a, a simple clicking um, sort of oscillator circuit. It's actually, uh, well, I'll show you here. It's a, one of my favourite circuits actually, the complementary pair wired up like an SCR. So it's uh, Basically, switch it stays turned off until there's some conduction through the, the base emitter junction of this transistor, at which point it slams on um, and discharges the capacitance. In this case, the, I've actually used the, the piezo elements capacitance itself. I had some additional capacitance across here, but it, uh, it turned out that the 15 nanofarads or so of the, the piezo was ideal for the circuit. But um, you're, if you choose to build this yourself, you may find you need to add extra capacitance if you want a lower frequency or you, you, know, you may have to fiddle with it a little bit, or you may even have to buffer this point and drive a piezo if the piezo has too much capacitance, but uh, most of them are around this figure, so you should be alright. The switch on point is set by this resistive divider here, it's about 3.3 volts. So imagine this whole thing being charged up almost to the positive rail. Um, your RF gets, linked, uh, gets uh, coupled into this inductor, and if it's acting as a wave meter, this capacitor tunes this circuit as a parallel tuned circuit and that's where it'll be most sensitive. If you've got it switched out then it just acts as a inductor coupling some energy through a 1N5711 rectifier uh, which is just a fast shock diode which is ideal for this. Um, this through uh, MPSA18 which is a high, very high beta transistor, very good for DC gain. This pulls current out of this capacitance so the voltage drops. Eventually forward biasing the um, complementary pair here and turning it on which will then recharge the capacitance quite quickly and then cut off again and this will produce a nice click in the piezo. Again I'll write all this up on my website and uh, talk about how to build it etc. I did at one point have some temperature compensation in the bias here. Um, when I built the circuit I left it out and as you can hear it's, uh, it's clicking away here because it's warmed up a little bit. I'll have to, I uh, might put the diode back in again to, to change that. You can uh, adjust this resistor to change the um, sensitivity of the circuit and you'll probably have to fiddle with it anyway because chances are your, your MPSA 18 might be exactly the same as mine but uh, 
it's an easy circuit to get going, it only takes a few minutes to build. Worked fine on the um, sorterless breadboard, it worked even better when I built it on a piece, uh, piece of circuit board here, because like all RF projects they tend to work better when you build them like that. And you don't have to look where you're going. I've also added the switch here, so in, that's in its uh, insensitive RF sniffing mode. Now if I switch it over to wave meter mode, it's now tuned, you can see it's much more sensitive already. I've got the polyvericon here to tune it. So what I'll probably do is spend the rest of the afternoon uh, gluing a little bit of paper on here and uh, calibrating it for various coils. Making your own coils, well that, that's, a, that's an article in itself. I think uh, one of the days in the future we'll be talking all about how to calculate and build the inductors for devices just like this. In particular it's uh, very handy if you can measure them with some precision. So until then, this has been one of the longer videos and uh, probably it's strange because it's probably one of the easier projects to build and uh, one of the more useful ones. But anyway, uh, it'll be written up on my website in a few days. I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to have the time to do that. Hopefully this weekend I'll, I'll get a chance to write them up in more detail. Uh, well, we'll see how we go anyway. And it'll, it'll appear in the description bar down the bottom eventually. There'll be a link to my website for each article. Alrighty, have a good day. Bye.